Hi, I'm Karina from Chula, and we're here to talk with Lisandra Guerra about her hormone health and cycle syncing. Lisandra is a holistic and functional nutritionist and a hormone health educator. Thanks so much, Lisandra, for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, so maybe just to go straight to the point, I want to start off with you telling you us a bit about yourself and for us to understand just what got you actually into functional nutrition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to share. Um, so like Karina said, I'm a certified holistic functional nutritionist. I'm a health coach, um, a health educator in, in the menstrual cycle realm. And um, I've been in practice for the last nine years. Um, but for the past four years, um, I've been focusing on helping people not only how to improve their menstrual cycle, but also what it means for their total health. Um, you know, including, you know, their physical, their mind, their body, their spirit, um, their connection to food, plants, the earth. Um, so what got me here, kind of like many people who are who are practitioners, it's like navigating my own health problems. And um, I suffered from like debilitating chronic constipation. And it was it was due to opiate overuse, but it what it did was it completely wrecked my whole system and you know it created a host of problems so constipation led to candida it led to parasites it led to um acne sugar cravings you know poor moods amenorrhea i mean the list kind of goes um and so that's because i didn't know how to take care of my gut at the time and um now that's been over 15 years and you know, at that time, I also tried like Western medicine and I tried over the counter medication and nothing worked. Um, so I got into holistic nutrition to understand the foundation of nutrition and how I can help heal my body um, from that wreckage. Um, so that was a really good foundation, but it really led me to get into functional medicine because I... I just thought it was extremely important to really understand the root cause of symptoms like digestive health and hormonal health, because at that time I started getting amenorrhea, that's lack of periods. Um, so it just, it was such a profound experience because I learned about, you know, functional nutrition, functional medicine, and how to heal the body, like from the root cause, you know, uh, finding the root cause. and just understanding how the organ systems work um, and how to bring them back to a healthy state. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I, I think that for me personally, you know, as you said, many practitioners go in through like these or many people that end up in this field or in the, interested in this area, it's like through their own like personal journey, struggles, mm -hmm. et cetera. Like I know I've lived through that and, so I, you know, I guess that now that you're on this other side and you're teaching others how to reconnect to their own health, how would you say that this has changed your perspective and your relationship with your own hormones and understanding of your body? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, at the time it was it was like a mind blowing experience because I went from like knowing nothing, you know, to like knowing how everything was connecting, um, like my lifestyle, my periods, what I was eating, how I was thinking. Um, I like, I didn't know anything about my periods. I, I really thought mm -hmm. it was like, you know, just something we get, <laughs> you know, we just have to have a period, but I didn't know really understand it. And it seems really like silly now because I was like, you know, in my late twenties, <laughs> but I think that's really common for a, a lot of people who menstruate. Right. Um, but I didn't know how like stress and blood sugar and like gut and liver health were so vital to the quality of my periods or my hormone health. Um, I didn't know what estrogen dominance was just, there was just so many unknowns and so many like new ideas that it was like, Oh, this is really important. Right. Right. As in my early thirties, especially when I was like, my my periods are wacky, you know, the, like my PMS symptoms are intense. Sometimes I have PMS symptoms and sometimes I have no period and I still have these symptoms. Um, and they, these are also really scary moments, um, you know, to experience and like a lot of confusion and frustration. But, you know, it's like there's the concept of the menstrual cycle being your fifth vital sign. 
Right. And, and that's something that's mm -hmm. becoming more well-known and people are talking about it more. And so when I found, like, when I started understanding like hormones, health, your menstrual cycles, it's like your fifth vital sign. It really led me to prioritize my health. Um, you know, it was like, how do I nourish them daily? You know, um, what do I do to like have more self care so that I feel more balanced? Um, you know, how do I stay sane and healthy? Just things like that. Just really understanding that hormones too are like these little messengers that are always changing, you know, these little messengers that are always communicating to each other and they're always changing moment to moment based on our external environments, you know, like what we place ourselves in. And so learning that in my early thirties was like so profound. And just like, now that I'm in my later thirties, I'm like, Oh, I've been really becoming a much more present and aware person because like, I don't want to teeter too off too much off the end, you know, where like I get hormonal imbalance. Um, and as I'm approaching, I mean, I'm in perimenopause now, you know, but as I'm like going into that other transition, it's like, ah, I really don't want it to be as heinous as all the stories say, you know, it's like, I really want to honor my body during this, this process. And so now my hormones are like my best friends that I like think about all the time. Oh, yeah, that's so interesting and powerful at the same time. I, I feel it that concept that you started with about our periods kind of just happening to us, I can totally relate to also that's something of where I'm started and I'm still starting to learn what it means to yeah. actually, you know, make our hormones our friends, you know? And I think that this ties to another area that you're really, you know, an expert at, I would say, which is functional nutrition, right? Like, I think this is a big word it's like we throw it around, we talk about it, and it seems at the mm -hmm. core of what's changed this relationship, right? And how you start thinking about these hormones. So, you know, when we start thinking about our hormone balance or getting our hormones to be our friends and our allies, mm -hmm. like how would you say that this concept of functional nutrition would tie into this aspect of, mm -hmm. you know, our hormonal balance? Yeah, yeah. And that that's such a good one because it's also like nutrition is such a loaded word <laughs> right like there's so many you know th there's diet culture there's nutrition and like we think of especially in in the u.s there's like the usda pyramid that says like the you know the ideal diet is like block 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 you know if this triangle that doesn't f it, it's like it's supposed to be a one size fits all but you know we're all so individualized and with different needs and that's what i love about functional nutrition coming from functional medicine is that it represents, it's like a, it's a one size does not fit all, <laughs> you know, and it takes into consideration a person's lifestyle, what they eat, what they, if they exercise, what their environment is like, if there's presence of chronic disease. And so, um, you know, it's just really individualized and, why I value this so much is that like, especially when it comes to hormone health, it's like thinking about someone who has PCOS and that's like estrogen dominance, right? Uh, like, like in hormonal imbalance. Um, and, you know, it's thinking about that person and what specific nutrients, specific foods are going to help their hormones and their gut health and their liver health versus someone who has like these bright, beautiful periods that mm -hmm. are like consistently come every month, you know, like that's going to be such a different approach to nutrition. So, so it makes me feel like, you know, it's, it's what you're saying about like really taking into all these different factors into consideration into mm -hmm. really understanding our nutritional needs and, also just like our bodily needs and where we're at yeah. to really kind of like connect to what's happening in our body right uh, mm -hmm. like versus kind of just like being like okay well i read about keto like let's just hope for the best and go with this without like exactly. really understanding our body you know <laughs> and following trends versus kind of like trying to really understand this more like complex networks of needs and and in our own context of where we're at yeah oh. 
Yeah, absolutely. And what I love about that, just to piggyback off of it too, it's like, you know, it, you become much, once you understand like your, what's happening with your body too, right. Based on your symptoms, or if there is, um, underlying imbalance, you become much more intuitive, you know, once you start to understand Mm -hmm. like what, what's going on with your body versus like keto, you might not be like super present. You might be like, Oh, I'm supposed to be doing this for this end result that like, you know, the media says I should be getting right. It's like, once you start mm-hmm. to eat for your health, you become an intuitive eater in, in lots of ways, you know, and more connected to your food. Yeah, for sure. It's like, I, I noticed that I was sometimes doing intuitive fasting without really trying right it was just Mm -hmm. like oh like I started connecting to my hunger cues and I noticed that that Mm -hmm. just like started leading to some days a week changing it up like not intentionally but just like kind of in my following of my hunger cues I was suddenly fasting and and I noticed that I was feeling better but that Mm -hmm. you know it wasn't this intellectual thing or this thing I should do but rather just like starting to follow what I was feeling um Uh you know and that's like a whole contentious subject but it felt like right like for me during that specific period of time and Mm -hmm. and i feel like you know related to this i I guess it's just like if we're in the process of starting to understand our bodies and read these signs you know like beyond like intuitive eating it's like if we're going you know circling back into hormone health right like what would be a key sign that our hormones are on balance or if we're starting to read the cues in our bodies like how do we know that something's off right like like what is normal and then what is kind of like uh, a red flag or a yellow flag even Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so some of the key signs to hormone balance and this i think is really it's interesting because a lot of menstruators experience these all the time and that that to the point where they've become so common they're normal right Mm -hmm. um but like irregular periods. So either having a too short of a cycle or too long of a cycle, um, having really light, like scanty pink colored periods or very heavy brown periods, um, chronic fatigue, having PMS symptoms. So like the, you know, the ones we're familiar with, like cramps, backaches, headaches, um, then there's pelvic pain, persistent weight gain, even if nutrition and exercise are implemented. Infertility is, I mean, it's like a big one. Like if you can't, you know, if you're infertile, like that's huge. Hot flashes, sleeping issues. All these are signs that hormones are off balance. And, you know, it, it, and, and, you know, we're specifically talking about like menstrual cycles, um, mm-hmm. right? But it's also, and these are like sex hormones. But we have so many hormones circulating in our body. There's like insulin, there's cortisol that affect, you know, weight that affect um, blood sugar levels that affect sleep. So, and that's why I'm saying that's like, there's a whole dance of all these hormones always dancing in our body, you know, but these are some, some big signs that there is hormones off balance that, that, that there are. Yeah. And so, like you know it's like okay so we see the signs we're like okay something's off right Mm -hmm. um it's like then what do you do about it so for me you know years ago when I was like okay clearly something's wrong the first thing Mm -hmm. that I when when I was researching the first thing I came across was cycle thinking like that for me was my first approach to actually being proactive mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. how do I do something when my hormones are off balance. And yeah. so I, I really wanted, I've been meaning to ask you, like, what do you think of the concept of cycle thinking? How would you define it? And, you know, for those that haven't heard about it, how do you, like, would you think that this is like that first approach that could be taking to be like, ah, something's off. How do I then like start like tackling this issue, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That was kind of like your first like go-to and, <laughs> Because, it, it, you know, it, it was kind of this, well, I went to functional medicine and I was just like, I got to learn this scientifically. But when I finished that, um, I don't even know how I came across Alyssa Vitti. And she she really coined that term, um, cycle syncing. And I'm so grateful for her work because, you know, I like soaked up her books right away and started cycle syncing. 
and it it it's been life changing. I mean, obviously, I do a lot of my work around it. Um, so Alyssa Vitti is a hormone expert, and so you know, after reading her work about it, but also like now reading herbalist texts and old um, literature, cycle syncing is a little bit of a concept that's like traditional it's like traditional wise woman way, you know, of like sinking your menstrual cycle to the moon, to nature, to seasons. Um, mm. But that's, that's not how I define it. <laughs> um, you know, it is <laughs> based, <laughs> it is based on that, like, you know, women menstruators, anyone who has a vagina, right, is like lives by an infradium rhythm. And so that's a 28 day cycle that regulates the menstrual cycle and the mens in that phase is four phases that we are maybe all familiar with. So that's the menstrual, the follicular, ovulatory and luteal. And within each of these phases brings a fluctuation in women's bodies and brains. Okay, so we all have we who bleed have an infradium rhythm. And so call in cycle syncing, which is a method that aligns your nutrition, your exercise, your overall lifestyle, even sex to the rhythm of your menstrual cycle. And so each phase kind of has like a, a different character, like a different personality mm -hmm. um, that like, you know, by adapting to new ways of like eating per phase, you know, the exercise, um, symptoms can be reduced, um, especially PMS, um, your periods become more regulated and more consistent. Um, blood flow is more like vibrant and like full, um, but your body just functions more optimally. And so you just feel better overall throughout your whole cycle. Um, and so embracing this natural cycle, it's just, it's a really profound experience to, to, you know, to understand and learn and to just experience it really. Um, yeah. And I've been doing it now for, gosh, I think I started in 2018. Um, and I haven't looked back. Like I still really incorporate so many aspects of cycle syncing. Um, and it, what I love about it is it keeps me like accountable. Like, and now that I've done it for so long too, it's like, ah, uh, I'm in this phase. I know what to eat. So why wouldn't I eat them? You know, it's like, <laughs> it, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And, and, and I love what you say about kind of like the, the wise woman, right? Kind of the thing <laughs> of, you know, it keeps you present, it keeps you connected, but it also yeah. follows this incredible transition of you know, herbalists and, uh, you know, women healers that have, really been connected to nature and and yeah. kind of passed down this knowledge that you know somehow got at some point lost i mean not we we can get into that conversation <laughs> but like got lost along the way you know and, yeah. and i think that you know we do owe a lot to lisa Vitti of like you know really being like hey <laughs> there's this thing and it's real and yeah here's like this this uh thing you can do right and and how it's really starting to come back into the mainstream. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, I personally also feel like it's really beautiful. And, you know, if we follow this path of cycle syncing, how would you say like, you know, what are key signs that we start feeling or noticing if our cycle, like hormones are in balance or if our hormones are our friends, right? Like once you start tapping into this way of being and feeling, like mm -hmm. how do we know that things are happening or working? Because obviously, you know, it's not a magic pill that the next day it's like, okay, everything's gone. I feel great. But like, what are things that we should start noticing or how do we know that, that we are yeah. implementing these things, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the first symptoms just based off like my clients, it's been so long for me now that I kind of like don't fully remember, but like, but my clients like, oh, I have more energy. It's mm -hmm. like, I have more energy. I'm not as weepy or as like pms -y during my luteal phase, the phase right before, you know, you, you're bleeding time. Um, there's just increased energy. Metabolism feels um, increased. So like people naturally like shed weight or become more of their natural weight. Um, sleeping is a lot better also. So 
it's just almost thinking about like the things that you experience daily. Like, do you have energy throughout the day? Are you sleeping well? You know, are you, um, are you having like, like, do you feel that perfect satiation with food, you know, where it's mm. like, oh, I feel full throughout the day and that feels good. And that's, you know, like not craving foods. So, um, so like if we tie like these like symptoms, right, which is just like really descriptors of overall well-being, right? Like yeah. mental, physical, emotional, yeah. like maybe it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning of like spiritual, like it's just like this kind of like increased feelings of well-being, like how how would you say that then it's like you know some people would hear this and they're like okay but how does this tie to our menstrual cycle right mm -hmm. um like all these descriptions and are these indicators like you know aren't necessarily like directly like associated right. mentally to like okay now i have a great cycle and and i i would love for you to go a bit deeper you know tying this kind of concept to um our menstrual cycle as like our fifth vital sign, right? Or kind of like mm -hmm. the whole idea of this fifth vital sign of our period. And how does this tie into what you're talking about general well being? Because I think that a lot of times we separate out, right? It's like, you know, um, menstrual health, general health, like you go to the OBGYN, they mm -hmm. check you out. And it's like, okay, like you have these issues, these hormones, mm -hmm. like, and it's just like, so segregated, I, I feel from Kind of like my overall well-being it's kind of like we've mm -hmm. like segmented these health areas we've th thought about our menstrual cycle as its own thing right like i think mm -hmm. maybe for some listeners when i would have said like what are the first signs that you feel imbalanced like i you know maybe somebody would have been like obviously it's like not having cramps or not having pms totally. but you're going into like this more holistic the, the, perspective yeah the the big picture and so you know, it's like, how does it really tie it into like this fifth vital sign? Like, how do you integrate like these two things that obviously are integrated in our body? Like, it's not like our body's like, okay, this is the part that does this. And this is the yeah, this, you yeah, know? yeah. And I think some of the like some of the the more the key symptoms then or signs then that people might be like, oh, my hormones are imbalanced. Then I would then go into like the color of your period blood, you know, if you are experiencing like cramps, right? It's like thinking about some of the, the key PMS symptoms that you had before and being like, are those still present? You know, because I think mm -hmm. that's what most people are going to identify as being like, ah, I'm hormonally balanced, right? Uh, yes, I'm not crying. I'm less irritable. You know, I don't have cramps. And if I do, maybe they're just really light right? I am sleeping. Mm -hmm. I'm not experiencing constipation right before I bleed, right? Or diarrhea right as I start to bleed. Um, so thinking about those, like some of the key symptoms that most people experience, mm -hmm. you know, I'd be like, ah, okay, good. Because sometimes too, it's like when we think about hormones being off balance or estrogen dominance, they're not being fully flushed out of the body, right? Mm -hmm. And so who's involved when they're not being flushed out of the body like great the gut and liver and this is where it's like we want to look at key pms symptoms if like are they still there or are they not right so that might be mm -hmm. someone's like ah cool i'm hormonally balanced but what that also might mean is like now trickling out to being like ah so are you going to the bathroom every day oh you are that's great because that's helping flush out those ex that excess those excess hormones right um are you like mm -hmm. sweating and like you know just perspiring and detoxing um are you getting good sleep because if you're getting good sleep that's when your liver is like doing its detoxification process mm -hmm. so you like yeah i originally went to like the bigger but when we start to like dial in on like ah well mm -hmm. the reason why you know a lot of those symptoms aren't there anymore is because now all these other sim systems like your gut and your liver yeah. are are feeling much more supported love this because it's it's about that interrelatedness right where there's can right. be that specificity and that generalness and it is about like integrating all these parts of yourselves and so you know like i i guess that when i think about you know when we start noticing these changes via like you know the more specific or the more general um 
you know, I, I think maybe some of us can be kind of impatient, right? And want results okay. immediately or want things. So, you know, if somebody starts implementing these lifestyle changes or start cycle syncing um, and starting to pay attention to how they're feeling, how their energy is, how their period is, et cetera, like how long does it take, would you say, mm -hmm. for someone to start noticing these differences or start seeing changes um, or how should they relate to these changes, right? Like, in mm -hmm. versus like like an outcome perspective versus like mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day kind of situation right. right um and i like this question because it's just like a no one size fits all it's kind of a everyone's different right and so because we are such individualized people um it will depend you know it's like I would say that PMS symptoms lessen and energy overall happens within a month. If you were to consistently mm -hmm. cycle sync, like starting from day one of bleeding, you know, to the next day of the next cycle of your bleeding, the next day one, the next day, <laughs> you would, you would most likely have better energy and less PMS symptoms. Right. But because we are so individualized and we have a health history, it depends. You know, like, do you experience, are you, I mean, do you have endometriosis or PCOS or were you not having a period for X amount of time? So everyone's so different on, on their hormonal journey that it, it, it varies um, for sure. And so then I would, you know, this is where I'm like, okay, everyone keep a log, you know, once you start cycle syncing, have your own like cycle journal where you're like noticing changes you know, like, and mm -hmm. I always like think about what were your PMS symptoms like? What was your period like? What was the color of your blood? You know, what mm -hmm. has been your energy levels like daily? And just always keeping track because that's the only way you, you can know, you know, um, oftentimes we forget. So it's like journaling and being like, ah, okay. Yeah. I am seeing improvements and I am seeing improvements. Um, so definitely I feel like within a month, mm -hmm. uh, it, and I've seen it with my clients, they start to feel so much better. Um, I feel like three months is a really good sweet spot. Cause you want to think about like, you got a whole cycle to feel better. Right. And then it's like, it takes time. And so I feel like three months of consistency, um, often is like, it's relevatory, um, you know, and that could still be in the beginning stages for some people where, where they see like dramatic results. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I guess that related to this, right? It's kind of this thing of not getting into diet mentality of like you fall off the wagon or you did something wrong yeah. and now like yeah. everything's messed up and now you can't have like hormone health. I don't know. Right. Like I, I think sometimes our minds can get kind of binary and be really dramatic yeah. or, or I can be. Uh, but mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I really wanted to ask you, like, if if we're in this process, you know, and we're committed, like, okay, like, I really want to see if this works, you know, I'm going to give it a shot of three months. But like, what does this mean if we like to party sometimes, or mm -hmm. we want to eat a piece of cake or junk food or refined totally. sugar or alcohol, right? Like, just yeah. do things that aren't really in the plan of connecting to our body and cycle syncing. Like, how do you really balance that out? And how do you make it in a way that can like, you know, let us incorporate these other things that give us pleasure, you know, and are healthy in that way, but, but also maybe not the best for our hormone, hormone balance. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you bring that because there is like, you know, there's consistency. That doesn't mean that you can't have any bad food, bad food. You know what I mean? Like, we don't want to feel like ashamed or like guilty about eating the donut or like having the the cocktail that's not like what it's like about you know um and that would just be unfun <laughs> you know and, and to me it's like consistency of like you know as you dive into cycle syncing and like you know some of the the offerings it has like what in terms of like nutrition it's like how can you incorporate it's like the 80 20 rule how can you bring in 80 percent of that consistency and 20%, it's like you can loose, loosen up, <laughs> for lack of a better, you can loosen up, um, you know, and it's, 
does that make sense so far where it's like yeah let's not make it bad or good and like you only have to do this 100 percent perfect because there is no perfect and i think that we always learn from our mistakes in order to make better changes you know and better choices in the future um you know and it, and it depends too because thinking about people who like to party or like just even having glasses of wine and socializing with their friends um Take note, you know, it's like a, bringing back to that bio individuality. It's like, who are you? <laughs> right. It's like, does alcohol hurt your sleep even with the glass of wine? Um, do you get low energy and headaches like the day after? Do you like easily get hung over? Um, you know, it, it's like when we think about certain things. And I'll probably choose, I'll choose alcohol for this example, because alcohol is a poison um, as much as as fun as it is. Um, it is a poison. It's a burden on your liver, you know, and so it can it can stop or cause irregular menstrual cycles because it does increase hormone levels of like testosterone, mm. estrogen. So it's just thinking about like, how can you nurture yourself before, during and after you drink, um, you know, like more hydration, um, eating before you drink, um, you know, it's just like taking, taking healthy measures while you do things that might upset your body. Yeah. So it's kind of like the shift, right. Of, of wanting to take care of yourself versus like this, like good or bad or perfect. Right. Because like, as you said, like, you know, if we're stressed, well, you didn't say it quite like this, but it's like, if we're stressed <laughs> out, like, you want to uh, be, you know, unperfect. Like, like, yeah, <laughs> but if like, we're stressed out and it's like, this has to be perfect or we need to do this. Like that's yeah. going to lead to higher cortisol levels. And that's Absolutely. like, also like not good for your hormone health, you know? And it's not that it's like, it has to be like, now you need to be like perfectly taking care of yourself. But it is like mm -hmm. about like, I, I feel like incorporating in this and at least like, just for me personally, a huge part of it has been about just being kind to myself, right? It's kind of like seeing, it's like, I, mean, I, I don't know if I should say this, but it's like, sometimes I see myself as like this little baby animal, right? And it's like, okay, well, what do, what do I want to do to like, yeah, like take care of it, you know? Yeah. Um, no, and, it, go ahead. But no. I love that you're saying that it's like, it's like, you can still have a life. You can still like do all these things. It's not yeah. about that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it is, you know, and, and anyone who's starting their health journey or wanting to prioritize their health more, don't totally, totally compromise, like, you know, because it will make you unhappy. Um, and I'm just going to share a short story because it, this can happen to people who are type A, I don't know, or like can be neurotic. When I When I was starting my nutrition school, when I was in it, I was like, I got to have every nutrient every day. I've got to like take, you know, all these supplements. It was just like, I was so like strangle holding the idea of like perfect health. And it actually wasn't helping that constipation that I was experiencing. And it was making me very stressed out and it was making me even crave sugar more. So it was creating, um, you know, an eating disorder essentially, but it was like for the perfect diet for the perfect nutrition that I wanted to have. Um, so definitely don't try to be a hundred percent perfect, like do the best you can, you know, and, and l let it go. And if you feel like I didn't have enough fiber today, try again tomorrow, <laughs> you know, so that's, yeah. my, that's my advice. <laughs> no, I love that. And I think that's like a really good message to kind of like close this off. Right. Because sometimes we just talk about what you should be doing and how to do it, but not really about like, how does this integrate to a life that's like maybe a bit more messy and a bit more complex, you know, and mm -hmm. not just on paper. And so I guess just like to close this conversation off, you know, for those that are first timers in being more intentional about their cycle health and in kind of trying to take like this new approach, what would you say, like top of your head, like first things that you, you should you should be doing like if there's like one thing that you need to start with what would that be yeah i think this is a, a fairly simple and very practical um thing you should do is track your cycle <laughs> you know like 
going back from when I first didn't know anything about my periods, I didn't know anything about tracking. I mean, there probably weren't any period apps back then, but, <laughs> but like, you know, tracking your cycle. And I do suggest, um, me and, and Karina from Chula, we both love, um, orchid app. And what I love about it is that like, I mean, any, any app, right. Right. Where it's like, you can, you just know where your cycle begins and like what your phases are. And as you become more aware of those phases, then um, like as you become more aware of the phases and you start to learn your cycle a little bit more, you just know how you shift your energy and your mood shifts throughout the month. And it's just, it's really a, a good way to like start being in your own rhythm and that and finding that with bio rhythm. Um, so track your cycle, use orchid app or any app that doesn't sell your data, um, and have fun with it. You know, um, lots of apps share like what your symptoms are. And then that way you can also start to learn like, oh, my symptoms have improved, you know? Oh, mm. I've noticed from last, last cycle that I was super anxious and weepy and depressed right before my, my bleeding. What can I do? How, how can I seek ways to have more pleasure so that I don't get that sad right before this next time that I bleed. It's just always reflecting and learning um, your symptoms. So. Mm. No, that's, that's fantastic. You know, I, I, it's just that thing about awareness is everything and actually knowing what's going on, right? Like even if you don't start cycle syncing, just even knowing what's going on in your body is one of the first Absolutely. things to actually mm -hmm doing something about it or or seeing where you're at right um mm -hmm. i think years ago when i used to uh i remember my therapist would be like every time that you're about to get your period you're like wanting to cry and i was like no like that's not true you know i'd be like in denial and yeah. and i was just like in denial about experiencing pms and and, and I, you know, I had that other sounding board that was like, hey, there's this pattern in you that I'm noticing, but that's something that we can find ourselves, you know, and I think sometimes we're surprised yeah. by how many things that we didn't realize so that once we start cracking mm -hmm. them, they can be super obvious. So I think mm -hmm. that's so cool. Like, definitely, mm -hmm. it, you know, I, I kind of thought you were going to say something about food, but, but I think like tracking is pretty awesome. <laughs> I know not um, everything has to be about food, which I think is, is, is good when it comes to like cycle syncing, you know, or, or just thinking about your menstrual cycle. It's like all the other lifestyle things that you can do to like become whole. Right. And <laughs> that's not just food. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Like, I, you know, I, I really appreciate your knowledge and you dedicating, um, this space to sharing what, you know, Thank you. So thank thank you. you. I really appreciate you inviting me so I can share this information with everybody. Yeah. Well, till next time. <laughs> but thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.